Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here so bright and early in the morning. My name is Ken Kepi. I'm an advisor for the U.S. Nuclear Energy Foundation. Thank you very much. I bring, I bring my own fan club. <laughs> I'm beginning to sound like you. Uh, and I want to welcome you to the first YES Symposium. We hope that this will go on for many more times. You must be very proud of yourselves for being here today because it's early Sunday morning and you're out of bed and wanting to hear the truth about Yucca Mountain. You folks are the vanguard of those who really do want a better future for all the peoples of the world. And as you'll learn today, nuclear energy is the way to provide 24-7 power, clean, safe, green, renewable energy to the entire globe. We will learn how Yucca plays a huge part in that future by providing storage for the nation's used fuel right here in Nevada, where eventually, with the continued support of today's honored congressman, and there's a lot to learn about these two gentlemen, but they, we all know about Mark Amaday, so we don't have to say a lot. But Mr. Shimkus from Illinois has been working very hard to get Yucca Mountain in a position to open. So with eventually that, will, that stored fuel could be reprocessed into new fuel, which would just continue our energy quest. Thank you for again for being here. We know by the end of the day you'll be much more educated and ready to become myth destroyers as you tell all you meet the truth you will learn today. Now it's my sincere pleasure to wait. Before I introduce the congressman, I'd like to introduce a great guy who has been working night and day for almost a decade in the grassroots public to get real green sustainable energy. Founder and director of US Nuclear Energy Foundation, Gary Duarte. Come on up here, Gary. <laughs> After the congressman finished speaking, Gary will introduce the distinguished men who will be on the panelists for today's event immediately following their remarks. Now with pride, let me introduce the rock solid, although a little irreverent individual. Uh, that's our congressman, who I have known become a very dear friend of, from my part inside. Uh, he always reserves whether I'm going to fit that or not. And I truly believe this gentleman is an honest public servant, something new and unusual. Mark and Amaday, who promises to keep it short. Mark, in turn, will induce John Simkus. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Amaday. Thanks, Ken, for that warm Truckee Meadows introduction. Um, and, and I appreciate you shortening that up. Actually, uh, I know that none of you came here today to hear me speak, and so I'm not going to disappoint you. Um, it is my privilege to introduce a colleague of mine that I've gotten to know pretty well over the 26 months and seven days that I've been in this job, but who's counting? Um, and so uh, during conversation a few months back, somebody says, hey, what's going on with the nuclear uh, with the nuclear stuff in Congress and Yucca and that sort of stuff. And I said, well, you know, let me see if I can talk to John Shimkus because he's one of the leaders in the House of Representatives and in, in the Republican Party in terms of knowing what's going on, uh, member of the Energy and Commerce uh, Committee, chairs one of the subcommittees on the, uh, on the uh, utility uh, committee, that sort of stuff. If you Google on uh, uh, congressionalrecord.com Yucca or Waste, you will see a ton of work with John Shimkus's name in terms of speaking on the floor, uh, educating on the issue, talking about the facts, doing all that other sort of stuff. Um, so I talked to John and I says, "Hey, uh, you know, there's some. We've got a pretty active group out in the uh, out in, in my part of the state of Nevada uh, that are looking for an update on this. You know, would you consider doing that?" And he says, "Yeah, you know, let, let me know." Well, then I talked to Ken, and you know, Ken some days can be kind of a tough, uh, a tough guy. And uh, so I'm going, hey, I've, I've talked with Congressman Shimkus, and he's, he's open-minded. He'd like to come out if we can get it to work out or whatever. Next thing I know, this is scheduled for the Sunday before Thanksgiving. 
Not that I have any input or should have any, but I'm going, wow. You're going to identify the true believers that are going to show up on the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Um, so anyhow, uh, being the kind of independent folks that we all are, they called Congressman Shimkus's office and said, hey, we want him to come out to Reno, give us a little deal Sunday before Thanksgiving. And like all good staff people would do, they instantly said no. Um, doing their job. Um, and, and I'm like, well, you know, I can understand how that might have got that way. But anyhow, I talked to John on the floor and I said, hey, you know, he says, you know what, let, let, me, let me see, let me do some checking. So anyhow, that's the kind of guy that John, John Chimkus is. He says, I'm coming out because I want to know more about what people in Nevada are thinking. Um, not that this is his first trip. I've uh, been to the state, talked to other folks. I see we got some Nye County folks here, stuff like that. Not the first time you've seen them. Um, but it's like this is a group that's been pretty active, and I think it would be beneficial for you to see them and also for them to get a, a, an update, if you would, from the horse's mouth. So I want to give you just a little bit of background. Um, anybody here uh, prior service in the Army? There we go. Well, um, th then you know those of us who served in the Army that didn't come through West Point refer to it as, as the Hudson High School for Boys. Um, but anyhow, Re Representative Shimkus is a, is a West Point graduate, spent uh, uh, five years on active duty in the Army, a lifelong uh, uh, Illinois kind of guy, been representing the 15th district, I believe it is, since uh, two, uh, 96. So he's, uh, he's one of those folks, unlike the present speaker, that has some seniority back there, that sort of thing. But let me tell you what I learned most about him. Nice guy, uh, make up your own mind, but a competitor. Uh, when you watch uh, John Chimkus get ready for the congressional baseball game in practices at 6 o'clock in the morning, and, and uh, I don't think I'm giving anything away, but, but he's, he's a little closer to Social Security eligibility than he was being able to drink legally uh, in, in any state in the union, which means he's a lot closer to 60-something uh, than he is 20-something. Um, absolute competitor, heart of a tiger. And I tell you that because when he grabs onto an issue, it's about knowing it as much as you can and working it as hard as you can, and it's still doing it. So would you please, uh, and, and came out here, listen, there's no fundraising, there's none of that other sort of stuff. It's, I want to see what these people have to say about the issue, give them an update from my perspective. And so please give a warm Truckee Meadows welcome to Congressman John Shipman. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. It's, uh, it is great to be here. Um, and I've been to Nevada a couple times, but never up here. Oh, I think I did ski Tahoe when I was stationed at Fort Ord back in 85 and 86. But uh, so thanks. Thanks for coming out. Um, and I think what I'll do, I only got about 20 minutes, so I'll, I'll pretty, go quick, pretty quick. There are there's just a lot of exciting things going on. And re, from the national perspective, I guess the plea is is for you know Nevadans to to join us in those positive things, and uh, and so let me I, I'm going to kind of cover there's there's a lot of current things happening. I I do know there's a there's a thing on Pandora's Promise you're going to have I've seen the movie, uh, and the basic premise of the movie I don't give it away if you haven't seen it is that the environmental community. Um, uh, really uh, shelve their real values in attacking something that they should be supportive of. I think that's my general analysis of that. And I, I, would, ar I would argue that, or I would plead for folks from the Nevada not to do the same thing. I think there's a great opportunity for the state, of, uh, for your state, to, uh, to do that. And um, that's why I'm so impassioned on this. So, encouraging you to seize this, this opportunity. I've been to Yucca Mountain twice. Once was about 14 years ago. And it was a, a busy place. It was a lot of activity, a lot of scientists, high paid, doctoral, uh, qualified folks, uh, uh, DOE personnel zipping all over the place, doing all sorts of things, uh, corporate entities having great interest in, in that facility and that, and that location. Uh, 
elected officials from not only the United States, but also around the world coming to, to view it, flying into Las Vegas, spending a couple nights. When I went out there the first time, I actually rode a helicopter out there. There's two helicopter loads of people who would go out there to spend the day and land. That was 14, 15 years ago. I also went three years ago when I became chairman of the subcommittee. Uh, we had to beg to, to get the gate open. Uh, well, I got threatened by some uh, uh, Democrats in the minority uh, and trying to use my trip uh, politically against me. Uh, I took two other members of Congress. We, we flew in, kind of like this, flew in, spent the night, uh, got a bus. <laughs> Three of us rode the bus out there. Uh, and all we could do is kind of look down the cave entrance or the tunnel entrance. Uh, the striking difference between busy activity, really economic activity, growth, um, versus really looking down into a tunnel, which all you could see is bird droppings. Um, stark contrast of, of, I think, a possible lost opportunity unless we continue to move forward. Uh, but I would argue that momentum is on our side. Uh, I, I know Mark has seen this happen on the floor. Um, and we cast two votes on the House of Representatives this year, and I wasn't even there because I had a heart thing. So I had, because usually I'm the one who's kind of leading the charge and want to make sure the votes are, are solid. We had two amendments offered to uh, walk away from Yucca Mountain on the House floor. They were both defeated by four to one majority votes. They were defeated. One was defeated 335 to 81. The other one was defeated 337 to 87. And that's not even including my vote because I wasn't in DC that week. So what the instructive purpose of that vote is, is there is, a, I mean, this is Washington, DC. This is a dysfunctional, right, congressional process where where there's no bipartisanship and no one can get along. Although four to one, which means large majorities of Republicans and Democrats said this is good public policy and we need to move, we need to move forward. The second thing was there's been a couple court cases that are very, also very instructive. And the one uh, recently uh, released was a new, the one on the Nuclear Regulatory Commission that they had to finish their scientific and evaluation reports because uh, a senator from an unnamed state was, was able to actually encourage the president to stop funding when it was the law of the land. That's my point mostly, is this is the law of the land and the, and, and the authorizations was, was written and the appropriations were passed and then the federal government said, but we're not gonna spend any money on it. So the courts finally intervened and said, no, uh, federal government, you can't just decide not to follow the law of the land. You need to finish the scientific and evaluation report, which is very, very critical. So just a couple weeks ago, after getting comments from all the stakeholders, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission said, we are going to finish this report, all the remaining three volumes. And I think what we're gonna find is the third volume is really the most important one. It, it talks about the safety nature of the repository and it's gonna come out saying that it's safe for a million years. Now, that's our brightest and our best. It's an independent commission that, uh, that really has this amount of report. They're just trying to get the money to finish the, the collating and the periods and the commas and the, and the corrections on the data. That's gonna be very helpful in the national debate about the safety aspect of this location. The second court case came out just Friday. So this is why this is very timely. timely. Uh, and this court case said that the, uh, that the federal government can no longer collect the nuclear waste fee from states that have uh, electricity generated by nuclear power because until the national government determines that they're gonna move forward on a long-term repository. Now what does that mean for the federal government? What does it mean for my own state? Okay, I, one of the things I love about my committee is it's an energy committee, so we really do profess all the above, all the above being nuclear, coal, wind, solar, hydro, all that, so you have a diversified energy portfolio. 
Illinois is a big nuclear power state. So what does this court case mean for Illinois? The, our, our principal electric utility that's uh, uh, nuclear generating is a company called Exelon. It will save $165 million, because of, which means they will not put into the nuclear waste fund, based upon this recent court case that came out on Friday. Overall, the federal government will lose $750 million if they don't show some progress and movement on what they're required to do by law. Now, you, you've been following Washington, D.C. and our spending and our budget process. $750 million is not easy to make up in this day and age. So I think that's another very, very important aspect of this whole debate. Now, let's turn to what also happened Friday. I guess it was Friday. These days kind of all merged together. But you know that the, the Senate had this filibuster fight, right? And they walked away from really an age-old tradition on, on, on the process. Now, your senator, who's a good friend of mine, Senator Heller, put out a press release if I can find it here real quick. I was wishing I was going to be more organized than what I am. And I had it. Now let me just summarize it. You can find it. He did a press release and he basically said, we know uh, Yucca Mountain and the Nuclear Waste Policy Act is the law of the land. He admits it's the law of the land. He also said, Elected officials from Nevada have been, over the decades, using every arrow in their quiver to stop it. By this changing of this filibuster, it, 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 it really puts at risk, and this is why I tell this to you, the ability of senators like Senator Heller from stopping uh, movement forward on Yucca Mountain uh, based upon the filibuster aspect. And that's his press release. So. A lot of these things are going on at the same time, and I would, so I would ask a couple questions. I would ask, if, if we, uh, where do you think that $165 million of Exelon tax dollar would go to, or the $750 million of nuclear waste funds would go if we were moving forward? Where do you think all the, those tax dollars would go? They'd go here, to Nevada. So there is, um, there's a lot of, uh, th this is why we're at a very instructional uh, point of in t uh, a time as far as uh, so how do we kind of move forward with your state, not without your state. Uh, at, a, at a committee hearing that I chaired, you know, we have this Blue Ribbon Commission, which was a way to try to move away uh, and start this whole process all over again. Can you imagine? $15 billion, 30 years in a process, trying to do a no, new location somewhere else. Uh, and you, do you ever believe we would really do that? The answer is no, we, absolutely not. We wouldn't do that. So there is $5 billion in the president's budget to move this process forward. And I pose the question to the executive branch, you know, what if we just offered that $5 billion to the state of Nevada? What if we just use that to help on economic development, economic growth, doing some of the infrastructure, and having, of course, they were silent on that proposal. Uh, later on, some of the folks came out with more negative comments to me about the proposal. But I think what we wanted to do in that hearing was to say, don't buy into this argument that, uh, first of all, that this, we think 